Luke chapter 21. And we left off, which devour widows' houses for a for a show, make long prayers. The same time shall receive greater damnation. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. Now, I'm not going to go against the chapter markets. They are inspired. I believe that in the verses. It's remarkable that God and the Holy Spirit behind that. But if you were just to remove chapter 21 from Luke and read 20 into 21, he just tells, he told the Pharisees, they make long prayers with widows. They devour their money. And now we go right into a widow put, placing their money into the chest. How's that? Casting their gifts into the treasury. Knows their gifts. And he saw also a certain poor widow. And she was just the subject of 20. How the Holy Spirit has lined these gospels. He said, well, Luke, he, he wanted it. Luke, let's see, they say, let me go back here real quick. Let's get a little. Luke, they say, was written... Uh, approximately 63 to 68 AD. You're trying to tell me 30 days, 30 years later, he remembers that he rebukes the Pharisees about a widow, and then in comes a widow? I can't even remember what happened yesterday. I did something at work yesterday, a procedure, I don't even remember how I did it. An hour after I did it. Okay? Yes. Man wrote the Bible. Man is the pen. But the Holy Spirit is the ink that goes in the pen. And he saw a certain poor widow casting thither two mites. He said of truth, I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. Now he just told you the Pharisees steal from the widows. Here is a widow that walks in is giving all her money voluntarily to God, not being stole by the Pharisees. And God says, I recognize that. And remember that, that Pharisee we talked about a couple chapters, I give tithes of everything. This woman gave her all and God said, I acknowledge her. And in September 13th, 2016, we are still reading about this widow. And we don't even know who she is. Who cares about the Pharisees? I don't know how many years, 33 AD, I'm not that good of a map, but look, we're still reading about this woman. She has been recorded in the Bible. She gave all. Haven't we been doing 20, 20 chapters? You're supposed to give it all to God. You're supposed to give up your family. You're supposed to give up your land. You're supposed to give it all. And Peter says, Lord, we gave it all. And God tells us in chapter 21, I acknowledged it. It's recorded down for all history. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. This woman's going to be all eternity, a given all. We're going to walk eternally with or without a crown on our heads, with or without a reward. Is your family worth it? Is your house worth it? Is your career worth it? How about walking with your family with the same crowns earned by your family together? How about that? Or is the fishing trip more worth it? Is bowling night more worth it? God, I'm trying to say, is a great record keeper. We need to acknowledge that. Of truth, I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. Only Jesus could have known her story. You recognize that one? This woman walks in, throws coin. Come on, you tell me. You stand in the church, and the next person that comes in puts money in, in the collection. But you tell me about that person. Come on, tell me. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto their offerings of God. Oh, of their abundance. So they gave to God on. Saturday for the Jews, Sunday for the Christian. After they spent their whole paycheck all the week, then what was ever left over after the Cokes and all that, then they gave to God. 
Me personally, I don't want to brag. I don't want to lose rewards. That first check I make out after I get my after I get my pay, acknowledge my pay, the first check. I'm not going to tell you what I give or anything like that. That first check I write is to God. Then the rent, and then I go on with the bills. I try to make the first check God's. This woman walked in and gave it all. Now, I have never done that. I don't have that much faith. But she, of her punery, it's extreme poverty. She ain't just poor. She's extremely poor. Has cast in all the living that she had. And as some spank of the temple, so he's, he's in the temple, he's near the temple, how it was adored with goodly stones and gifts. Wait a minute, he just spoke about a brilliant, brilliantly, that's not okay, it worked, poor woman, and oh, look at the stones on this place. Adorned with goodly stones and gifts. He said, as for these things which ye behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down in 33 AD. 37 years after this, this prophecy is fulfilled. 70 AD under Titus, the temple is destroyed. <coughs> Jerusalem is destroyed. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. Uh oh. So when he talk about end times, there's a mark to be deceived about it. Check out what most of your Christians on Facebook write. One of those say, what is it? Now the end has come or something like that. Now we're, huh? really? Okay, sure. All right. For many shall come in my name. Jesus is a Mexican name for Jesus. You know how many boys in Mexico have the name Jesus? Saying, I am Christ. Okay, there are some going to be coming Jesus. And then there are going to be some going to step up and say, I am the Christ. I am the anointed one. Texas had one. There's a one in, in California jail right now. Who claims to be the Messiah. There was one in, I think, Korea. Or one of those areas over there. That's what I meant, Texas. There have been all kinds of anointed ones. Probably, yeah. And, just, and you say, oh, oh, the end's got, Yeah, but he said many. How many is many? Anybody want to give me a number on many? There is none. Many. And the time draws near. See, the time draws near. It's not the end. Oh, a guy came and said he's Jesus and the Messiah. We're in the end time. But now the time draweth near. It's coming to an end. Go ye not after them. So what about all the Branch Davidians? The Bible told you. You need to walk up in that guy in his face, say, Luke 21, you're a, you're a deceiver. You're, you're Get out of my face. Bye. But when ye shall hear of wars, newspaper headlines. Even the Jerusalem Post, if they had one back in Luke's time, there was rumors of wars all over the place. And commotions. Be not terrified. Be concerned, but don't be terrified. For these things must first come to pass. But the end is not by and by. How's that? So when you're on your Facebook, I'll point that out because I dropped a lot of those friends of mine. Just, But if you got friends, just say, you know what? You don't know your Bible. Yeah, okay. There's signs of coming to the Lord, but 
the end's not here yet. You know, what, you know what the end would be? I'll tell you when the end would be. When that abomination of desolation and the Antichrist sits where he ought not to sit, then you're in the end. Then you know it's three and a half more years. How's that? But we're not told about the rapture. We're, we're not told when the, you know, the rapture could happen right now, okay? We're not guaranteed the seven years tribulation will start right when we're raptured. You know that? There's no date saying, okay, rapture, now the seven years tribulation. There's no date of that. It could go on for another four years, go another five years, go another 20 years. But we do know there's a seven year period. So how can I say, I know the end is coming when that abomination sits where he ought not sit? I, then I know it's three and a half years, then I know it's a thousand years, then I know it's eternity. If you're going to date anything, you're going to date by the Antichrist. And we don't know when. Jesus said, I didn't know. He said, the angels didn't know. The temple hasn't even been built. Even if the temple was built, we still don't know when. They could build that temple tomorrow. What? Still got a date when that Antichrist sits in the most holy place. What must happen before that? Then the church must go. And between that time and that time, let's say they do build the temple in our time. Well, you're going to have wars. You're going to have our presidents who want oil. And the Arabians are not going to want to give up the oil. You're going to get some raghead over in the Middle East going to try to take over the world. We're going to stop him. And we're going to get some fancy, dancy, little puffy little boy over in the Orient who's going to try to start wars and all that. And we're going to get, you know, you got wars in the, in, the, in the job place. That's my job. That's my position. That's a war, James says. These people just get so paranoid. Then said he unto them, Turn page. Okay. Nation. So there's an any. Nation shall rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. <gasps> Did you hear we're, we're at war with Iran? Yeah, so? Did you hear South Korea is launching against North Korea? Yeah, so? Did you hear about the battles in Africa? Yeah, so? Did you hear about the writing in America? Yeah, so? <laughs> What's the big deal? <gasps> yeah, but the Bible said Jesus already told you. He told you not to be terrified. Relax. He told you be fear of the one that can take you, kill you, and cast you into hell. I'm saved. The worst thing they can do is kill me and send me to heaven. Matter of fact, if they were going to drop a bomb, I'd be loving right on top of my house. I put a big red uh, nuclear Sorry. war. <laughs> put a big red X on top of my thing. All right, ready? Here's the next great one. And it says, great, and great earthquakes. I had someone who used to be on my face, but every earthquake in the world, this person would prophesy as the end's coming for the last two years. I would check the news, and there wouldn't even be a report of these earthquakes. Shall be in diverse places. Okay, panic, panic. We had, last month, we had an earthquake about 40 miles away from Daytona Beach in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, my God. We're still here. The rumble of a wave that came from that earthquake was probably a whale farting bigger wave than what that earthquake provided. And famines. <laughs> famines. You want to tell me when there wasn't a famine in India? With a bunch of hamburger running around? Worshipping the gods of the hamburger. But all of a sudden we get a famine and we're and pestilences. And fearful sights. What's a fearful sight? Seeing men that look like women and women look like men. That's a fearful sight. Men buns. Watching a woman do a man's hair in, in class. A man asking a woman for a barrette. It ain't over yet. Now, I'm not saying, you know, give up the thought, the rapture. Like, Amen, glory to God. We don't know when, but Jesus said all this stuff is going to happen. Great signs shall there be from heaven. Be careful now. What great signs from heaven? 
even the Antichrist is going to be bringing great signs from heaven. To deceive the very elect, if possible, with great powers and force. I like that they were trying to do a few months ago about the blood moon. Yeah. There's always been a blood moon. There's always been a harvest moon. Always. One day there's going to be a sign on the moon. Not according to the Bible. Eat at Joe's. Coca-Cola. Budweiser. It's the end of the times. No, it's man reach the moon and put advertising. But. And you say, you're making fun. I'm making fun of what people think of this. I don't even, I follow the headlines in the news, that's it. Just to see what's going on in the mountain. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you. The book of Acts. Uh, nations where Islam is ruling today with Christians. The book of the, the, the Fox's Book of Martyrs. You know how many years Fox's Book of Martyrs has been written? Over the decades that book takes place? Delivering you up to the synagogues. Book of Acts. Into prisons. Book of Acts. Being brought before kings, book of Acts, Paul. And rulers for my name's sake, Paul, John, Peter. Jesus is prophesying to them about what the book of Acts is going to be. And even Paul said, you know, we are in the end days. And Paul hoped to see the Lord in his time. And it shall turn, and you never see Paul, Peter, James, or John write, this is the time. You got three months, four days, and two hours. You never see him do that. Well, even like um, John Bunyan and Obadiah Holmes and all them, too. All, all suffered. suffered for and they never said, this is the end day. No, it happened. They just preached the word like Noah preached it. Noah knew, had no idea when that, was, when that rain was going to begin. He would have finished that ark. God just told him 40 days and 49. He may have finished that ark and I guess we got to wait. Keep preaching. It shall turn to you for a testimony. Your suffering. I know today that churches that protect themselves from suffering. Hey, you know what? It may be a testimony. You know, when you read Fox's Book of Martyrs, you know how many times somebody suffered for Christ, death, and then later on, somebody stuck, st ugh, stood out in the crowd and received Christ as their Savior because of the person's testimony. You know how many times an executioner turned to Jesus Christ by the testimony of those people he killed? But today, as Americans, we're going to fear and we're going to protect ourselves because it's our Constitution, right? You fool. I'm going to be careful how I say that, too. You know, when the church was persecuting the book of Acts, that's when it grew. Check it out. When it was relaxed and nobody was persecuting after Paul got saved. How many people got saved? Only during persecution. Settle it. Settle it. We've already discussed this. Therefore, in your hearts, are you going to risk the persecution, the suffering to serve me? Settle this day right now. We've already talked about this in the, in the Gospel of Luke. Mark it down. If you're going to serve Christ, it's going to be troubles, hardship, pain, and sorrow as far as the earth. Glory, joy, long-suffering in eternity. Rewards in eternity. may not get rewards now, but settle down in your heart. You ready? You want to do it? You want to fight the good fight? I'm going to give you armor. The reason why I'm going to give you armor because if you're going to serve me, it's going to be a battle. I ain't going to give you a bag of potato chips, Jesus said. Jesus said, you know, in Ephesians 6, all right, here's a couch, here's a remote control, here's a bag of chips, you're going to be a Christian. He doesn't say that. He says, here's a sword, here, here's a shield, here's a breastplate, here's a helmet, here's sandals. Uh, uh, what do you think that's for? Let my light shine so all people can know. The fight. Not to meditate before what ye shall answer. Now he's speaking to the disciples. 
They don't have a Bible. They have not really memorized scripture. Peter is not going to walk up to the king and say, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord. Oh, wait a minute. I got to wait for Paul to go to prison before I can say that. John is not going to walk up to him and say, for, 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 uh, oh, I can't quote it. He ain't going to quote Romans 10, 9, and 10 when Paul hasn't written it yet. What they're going to say with an unwritten Bible, and even the Gospels are just starting to be written in the book of Acts. Even then, it's got to come out of the Holy Spirit. Men wrote the Bible, but guess how they spoke? He said the Holy Spirit and other Gospels. So Jesus is telling you, what you read in Acts, what those men said, yeah, men wrote it down. Luke is writing down, but the Holy Spirit is doing the speaking before the scriptures are written and sealed. There is no Bible but the, but the Old Testament. Peter is not carrying the Old Testament around. He couldn't. He would need a caravan of camels to carry the scripture. Scripture was on rolls. So no pocket Bibles. And Mark 16 says you go out with all these wonders as a testimony. Uh, Mark 16, let me go there. I don't want to get this wrong. Mark 16 says. Go ye all the world and preach the gospel. He said, these signs shall follow, and there's a particular word here, to confirm the word with signs. Because there is no gospel. There is no Pauline epistle. There is no 1620. The Bible is being lived and written in man's hearts as they're living. Luke is not sitting with Jesus right now writing the gospel of Luke. He's not going to the, oh, wait a minute, Jesus, stop. I got to get this down. Let's see. Zachariah, Zachariah, is it Achilles? Is that your name? How do you spell that? Jesus, wait. Well, yeah, I'm trying to get the guy's name. He's not doing that. What is that? There's a sycamore. Hold on. Jesus, please stop. Wait. Just sit down and take a break, Jesus. I got to finish this. You know, I can't keep up. He's doing too much. Because John said, if we were to record everything, can you imagine what John said? Can you imagine what your Bible looked like if you, said, if you record everything Jesus did? Open up volume 1 million, section 26, page 583, fourth line down. You see where it says the 14th, the? Especially if it started recording right from the time he. If we knew his birthday. He was <laughs> preaching even around the time he was, what, 13 in the yeah. temple. If we knew the whole conversation there. Oh, my gosh, I'd love to have known what he was saying to them back then. So Mary got back, and how was it? Mary said three, three days? days? Yeah. So you can imagine three days of talking to those guys and just putting them in their spot. And they were in awe of him at 13. So, I mean, I mean, I seriously, I just can't picture God going to the bathroom. I can't picture Mary telling Jesus, all right, eat your peas. You wonder, made them. I wonder sometimes if these Pharisees and Sadducees and elders that were giving him trouble now at 33 and a half years old if they were there alive when he was yeah, 13 they yeah they'd probably be old says elders they'd be older than him yeah and they're like well this is that kid that was here back then. yeah I mean, that's the thing. You just got to want You got to read the Bible as it is. I mean, just can't picture Mary's own God. Eat your peas. You made them. Changing his diet. So, I mean, Jesus had a life. He fell asleep. He ate. I mean, did he have heartburn? I don't know. The Bible says he suffered. Some pain from walking See, I don't know. That part, I just don't know. I can't answer. I know he had aches and pains at the cross. Okay, get back. Let's see. So, in your therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will. Matthew ten nineteen says the Holy Spirit. Jesus never proclaimed to be God. You are a filthy, hell bound liar. Scripture with Scripture, Matt. I think that's Matthew. Yeah, Matthew ten nineteen. Jesus said the Holy Spirit. And Luke 19, 15 says, I will give you a mouth of wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Oh, I wish I had that mouth. He 
and ye shall be betrayed both by parents. How's that one? Mom and dad is going to turn you in. Which ones? He's speaking to this, one of those disciples, if not some of those disciples, when we read about them in the Fox Book of Mark, was by their parents. Did you ever read that with the Fox's Book of Mars? Somebody turned them in, and it was their parents. And brethren, Jewish people. Judas turned Jesus in. Judas was Judas. Ju Judas was Jewish. He can't, hey, that's a tongue twister. Kids, folks, aunts, uncles, grandparents, brothers, sisters, friends, faith, family, friends. That plaque is not biblical. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. All but John. Judas commits suicide. All the rest of them died in the hands of a man. So some here speaking to the disciples would be at least 10 of them. If it's not the 70 too. 70 in addition to the death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. So when you walk in a church that has a plaque given to you by the city that you're in, that you're just so great and wonderful, you're not serving God. Touche to another church. Because what did Jesus say? You will be hated. They will not like you. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Well, we got people that come up to us and they just like, yeah, let them stay around. Let them come every single week and hear what you're doing. You're going to eventually going to get them. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. It's like we get hair in heaven. In your, pre in your patience, don't want to say that word, possess ye your soul. Okay, and the disciples had no idea he was speaking about them. And when he shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, you say it's 70 AD. Now the time is coming. Ready? You know how you know it's not 70 AD? Then know the desolation thereof is nigh. So what is the sign of the tribulation? Armies are going to surround Jerusalem and here comes the Antichrist. That's sure. Don't look for armies surrounding Jerusalem right now. That's everyday other topics of news in the newspaper. It's almost like every third story, newspapers take you back to Jerusalem. Then you get three big stories. Then we're back to Jerusalem. An airplane crashes, a celebrity dies, blah, blah. We're back to Jerusalem. You notice that? Mm -hmm. Satan wants to get your mind. Oh, here we are. Here we go. Here we go. Don't you worry. Rapture's coming. But as far as the Jew, it makes you wonder if 70 AD, if they thought that was the time. You know how they knew afterwards that that wasn't the time? When they looked at that temple and it was destroyed and there's no way for the Antichrist to sit there. It's destroyed. You can't have the Antichrist right now from 70 AD to 2016 because there's no holy place. But then again, we don't know what time the rapture is going to happen, do we? So stop dating. We don't know. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. We've seen this before. And to them that to them which are in the midst of it depart out. Let not them that are in the countries enter there to get out of Jerusalem. When did God ever tell his people to get out of Jerusalem? When Nebuchadnezzar came. So the captivity, the destruction of Jerusalem that happened in Jeremiah's time. 
will happen again. But the city won't be destroyed this time. It will be sitting with the golden image, the music, and the fiery furnace. But remove the fiery furnace for a guillotine because their heads were beheaded in the book of Revelation. With a woman sitting with a, with a cup of the blood of the saints. By the way, those saints are Jewish. And when they take the mass of the Jewish blood, it will be Jewish blood. But move on. And for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So there's prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled. Daniel has not yet been fulfilled entirely. Revelation yet has not been fulfilled entirely. But woe unto them that are with child, pregnant. And to them that give suck, young children, in those days. Why? Mm -hmm. Obamacare will have to be received a mark care. All right? Your water broke. You're about to give birth to a baby. You can't run down to the local ER without the mark, inspect them to, to give you the medicine that they give you, and then have a safe, healthy childbearing. Let me see the forehead, or I forget which hand it was. Right hand. I don't have it. Your child is hungry, starving to death. I'm going to be clear. You can't provide enough nourishment for that child yourself because you haven't been eating. You haven't been drinking. You're not healthy because you can't buy food. So that child is screaming at your breasts for food. What are you going to want to do? Maybe be tempted to receive that mark? See, Jesus spoke of a motherly love. And you know what's so harsh? Seven years, that child may grow up. Seven year tribulation period, all three and a half years. That child may grow up and turn on you. And you say over here, parents will. For there shall be great distress in the land. Hey, was Santa, uh, Satan, I almost said Santa Claus. I don't know why he said that. You ever read about the vials, the trumpets, the seals, the woes, those scorpion bites? And wrath upon this people. Ooh. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. War. Wasn't that one of the horses? There was peace. I don't know if war came out. There was peace, famine, war, death, and hell. I, I don't know the order. They shall be led away captive into all nations. So they're going to go back to Jerusalem only to be deported again. Under Who did that? Adolf Hitler and the Nazi re regime did that. World War II is going to happen all over again. Worse. And what Hitler did to the Jews is only going to be just pencils and beans compared to what Antichrist is going to do to them. And Jerusalem shall be trotted down, un down of the Gentiles. Ooh. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled, and that's the church age. That's spoken of by Daniel. The toes and the miry clay. That's the last kingdom before Jesus comes. Just before that kingdom is the Roman kingdom. That's the kingdom we're under right now, the Roman kingdom. You know, believe me, go look at all the, the architect in Washington, D.C. and tell me what design that is of. All those columns and all that. And then look at the, the, that, 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 that big Washington monument there. Well, what's that monument after? Egypt. We're Americans. We got no American architect in Washington, D.C., our country. And there shall be signs in the moon. I mean, excuse me, signs in the sun. Eat at Joe's, Coca-Cola, I don't know. Maybe today. But, and in the moon. And in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations. 
with perplexity. Why? Antichrist is on throne. S uh, trumpets, the horsemen, the vials, the seals, the woes. Jews are being murdered. Guillotines are worldwide. The only thing that's going to protect you is the mark. And if you got the mark, the wrath of God is falling on your behind. And in Revelation 12 says, Satan is cast out of heaven and he has revenge and anger because he knows that a short time. He's going to have anger and revenge on all his people. Nice guy. Really nice guy. Imagine a guy going to work, all right? Goes to work, he gets fired, he gets canned from the job, and he comes home and beats up his wife. That's what Satan's going to do to his people. He's a nice guy, isn't he? What did they do to him? They just followed him. They just worshiped him. They just gave him all the honor and glory he wanted. And he comes home, and he'll come home to his earth and beat him up. You don't, like, you don't like to hear a husband beating up his wife? Well, that's what Satan's going to do to his people. Go out there and tell them what Satan will do to them. Go out there and tell them about the love and grace of Jesus Christ that they may be saved. Let Satan be mad at you because you're witnessing, not because you, his time is short. Men's hearts, that's what salvation lies in, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Failing them for fear. Heart failure. Anxieties. And unless you have the mark, you can't get the pill and you can't get the med medical condition. How's that? And for looking for those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers, there's the powers, there's the superpowers, there's the, 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 the big ass and the half naked women and these weird creatures that are going to protect mankind. You know, the comic books. If you read some of those creatures that in Revelation, they almost look like the creatures are coming out of the comic books. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Powers, principalities, Satan's people hanging out in the universe. The stars are falling. Satan's cast, cast out of heaven. His angels with him. One third of them. The, the, the moon's going to turn to blood. The sun is going to give off his life. When is all that according to Revelation? That's at the end of the tribulation period. How do you know? And then, and then shall you see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. There's the second advent. Oh, Jesus has gave a great future events in one chapter, 27 verses. He went through their period. He went through 70 AD. He went through the book of Acts. He went through the church age. He went through the seven years of tribulation. Here we are now going to millennium in 27 verses. Now don't you understand they don't, under, they, don't, they don't understand the church age? They don't understand the time? But Christians today understand only reading parts of the Bible, never reading all of them. Daniel, the Gospels, and Revelation are not the only books in the Bible. Exodus is a great book because Exodus is going to happen again. And you can't press Nebuchadnezzar all the way because I believe Nebuchadnezzar got saved. As our family reading the Bible, the next chapter, man, he's going to glorify God of all glory. Satan won't do that. I've got a message I won't preach, but I've got it in my Bible. I, I'm, I'm looking for a flaw before I preach it. But I believe, I, I, and I could be wrong, but I don't think Satan's going to be at the Great White Throne Judgment. I don't think he'll ever profess that Jesus is Lord. I'm looking for a flaw in that message before I even teach it. I'm going to read the Bible five, ten, maybe ten times all the way through before I even preach a message like that to be careful. But to me, it looks like Satan will not fall down and worship Jesus Christ as Lord. Everyone else will. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. They're going to see the front of Jesus coming, and we're going to see the behind. How's that? We're coming at this moment with Jesus as he comes. 
on horseback. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption drawing. What do you say? All right, we got all kinds of earthquakes. What are you supposed to do? Panic? No, look up. Okay, you're coming, Lord. Jews require a sign. So when a Jew sees earthquakes, wars, famines, you know what a Jew is supposed to do? You're supposed to look up to your Messiah. No Gentile is told to do that. What is the church told to do? All right? Are we supposed to look to earthquakes, pestilence as our sign? There is no sign. You know what you're supposed to remind you? Okay, it's in the Bible. You ready for this? Not all do this. When you take the Lord's Supper, it's supposed to remind you what Jesus Christ has done for you and what? He's coming again. You know what's supposed to remind the church that the Lord's coming? It's not famines, pestilence, and all that. It's when you take the Lord's Supper. When you take a moment, you're supposed to have a quiet moment with God. Confess your sins. Remember the night that Jesus was in the garden to the place that he said the angels proclaim he's not here. He's risen, sitting at the right hand of the Father. During that time, you, for the Lord's prayer, I mean, for the Lord's table, for the Lord's Supper, you are to remember the last days of Jesus Christ and what he did for you. And then when you're done thinking about the blood, thinking about his skin being ripped open, you think about those nails, you think about the pain that he suffered, that he suffered pain that you never suffered a day in your life, that he did it for all you, and that Lord suffered. When you think about everything he's done for you and all that you have is because of him, then you think he's coming again. And when he's coming again, I'm confessing my thin, sins. I'm thinking of Calvary. I'm thinking of the cross. I'm thinking of an empty tomb. He better not catch me with that beer can. He better not catch me missing out on him. He better catch me not reading that book and not reading the Bible. Because he's coming. The Jews warning here. Hey, don't get caught. You may fall for Satan. Yeah, Satan's running around. The Antichrist is running around. But you better look to the fact is that Jesus is coming. Your Messiah is going to mount up. He's going to come and get you. Don't you worry. Don't you care. You just do what God told you to do. And he's coming. The Jews are going to have the same troubles and problems we're going to have as the church age. We got problems. We got we got taxes. We got all kinds of things. But Jesus is coming one day. And whether, you, whether, I die, whether he calls me up in the rapture or I die, Jesus is coming. That's the same thing for the Jews. But just more worse than what the church age is. And he spake to them a parable. Ooh, telling you, hey, folks, this is a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye, shall, ye see and know of your own self that summer now it now is now nigh and yeah, this is, that summer is now nigh at hand. This would be spring. Song of Solomon two. 8 through 17. He's giving you a kind of date in the tribulation. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of... Are you waiting for the kingdom of God? No, I'm waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not waiting for a kingdom. Kingdom's not mine. That's the Jews. Oh, you mean after 20... After... Oh, man, after 30 verses, I'm supposed to worry as a church aid. It has nothing to do with me. See, my hope is Jesus Christ, not a kingdom. King of kings, Lord of lords, of the throne of David. That's a clue. Is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away to all be fulfilled. It's been a very long generation, hasn't it? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not shall not pass away. The eternal. So we're going to read about that riddle's might. And take heed to your, <coughs> excuse me. Take heed to yourselves. 
Lisa, anytime your hearts be overcharged and suffering is eat, drink to the excess and drunkenness and cares of this life. Remember the parable of the sword that went out among the thorns? So that they come upon you unaware. You're, a Jew is supposed to look at all this and say, the Messiah is coming. I'm going to run, but the Messiah is coming. That guy is after me because I'm Jewish. The Messiah is coming. If I eat and drink to the excess, what would I be doing in the tribulation in order to eat? And You would have the mark. For a Jew that's going to survive without the mark, he's going to get some help from the nations. Matthew 25. But he's not going to be overeating, over drinking. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the earth, uh, excuse me, on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always. Well, that matches the Paul line of his old. And ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I'm going to stand before Jesus, my husband, my bride, my Redeemer, my Savior, my Savior. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. And at night, he went out and abode in the mount. That's called the Mount of Olives. He didn't have a place to stay. He went out in the wilderness. I always wondered with, with the story of Daniel. Did a couple of lions come up to Jesus? Hey, hi. Our great, 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 don't the animals listen? Then doesn't the animals in the Bible listen to what God tells them to do? Then an ass preach what God told them to preach. Did not the ravens bring the food to Elijah? Wouldn't it be this funny where no man was? Didn't Adam have complete fellowship with all the animals? You ever watch Flintstones? Ever watch all the animals how they had different jobs and all? I wonder if that was in Adam's day. You know, he had to open up a can. He called a beaver over. There was a there was an apple high in a tree. He called the giraffe over to get it and all that. Elephants gave him shower. Elephants gave him the shower and all that. And the, the pigosaurus took care of all the, you know. I One of the animals came to Jesus. Hey, I would be honored. I wonder if a squirrel came up to Jesus. Hey, I'd be honored if you would have this nut. I can't carry more than one nut in my mouth, but I'd be honored, Lord Jesus. I know, maybe they didn't speak, but they spoke to Adam. The Bible says in the garden, and the angels came and ministered to him. And all the people came early in the morning to hit to him. So Jesus had the peace in the mountain. But when you read the Bible, Scripture, Scripture, most of those moments he was in prayer. Rather than asleep. He got so tired one time on a boat. He just fell asleep on the pillow during a storm. God rocked his son to sleep with a storm. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple. For to hear him. Now. Let me remind you again. We'll be done. What did Pilate say was the problem with the Pharisees when they delivered you? They're coming to temple bright and early in the morning for what? To hear Jesus. If you could not rub it in anymore. Imagine those temple. Imagine they'll come in, open up the, the temple in the morning like they're supposed. There's a bunch of people and they'll be, hey, and they'll be, when's Jesus coming? Oh, man. I'm so sick and tired of Jesus. You're supposed to hear from me. You know? 